Okay, so then let's uh, start. So now do we on? Now do we on? Yes. What about limited liability? What does that mean? Okay, so your financial loss is limited to a fixed sum. Okay, just your stocks. You can't lose any more than your stock. Okay? What about a private company? Does a private company have limited liability? No, no. No, right? Your private company, you have to pay out of your own personal things to the creditors. Okay? Uh, transaction costs, doji on. Okay, so give me an example of an economic exchange. <coughs> buying what? Buying and selling products. Buying and selling, we're buying and selling the stock, we have a transaction cost, right? We have to pay the stock trader $30 to buy and sell the stock, right? It has a cost of time and money. Uh, G1. Default? Uh, Okay, so failure to pay on time, right? They don't pay back their loan, their interest or the loan on time. Then they are, in, we call in default. Pak Ji Hoon, bankruptcy. You might have no money, but you could be in default. Are you bankrupt? What is bankruptcy more officially, yes? Okay, so it's like a court procedure. Do you understand court? So some, something like that. So some, right? Bankruptcy is the court proceeding. You might default on the loan, and the creditor says that's okay. I'll wait till next year. You can pay me next year. Don't worry. Okay, but if they don't, they might take you to court. Okay. And then the judge will tell you, sell all your land and give the money to him. That's bankruptcy. Okay? Uh, part A1, credit. Do you have a credit card? What is credit? You trust the other person to pay you back. Okay, so you give the person a loan and they're going to pay you back. Uh, so Ming Gyeong, what's a lease? What is a lease? You have to speak loudly if you're at the back. Borrow money for what? You're not really borrowing money, you're borrowing something, right? You're borrowing a car, or you're borrowing an apartment, okay? You're paying a fee for borrowing something. Issue bonds, Yang Hai Yang. Yes, what does it mean to issue a bond? What does issue mean? Another word for issue. Can you answer? 
Can anybody, what does issue mean? Hmm? What does it mean to issue? Transaction, sell, right? Make a bond and then sell it. Issue a bond. Create a bond and then make it available for sale. Okay, and finally, investment bank, or some me. What does an investment bank do? How is it different from normal bank? Anybody tell me what does an investment bank do? Yes? Maybe it, it makes investitions in the company. Makes what? Invest in, into the company. It can invest in companies, yes, but what is more important than that? Uh, gathering investors. Helps to match companies and investors, right? So it helps to sell company stock and companies bond. <coughs> helps companies to get money. Helps companies to raise funds, okay? Do you have any question about this part, debt and equity? Okay, then let's move on to the next part. So the next part is financial statements. If you study accountancy, you'll know about financial statements, or if you studied about it before, you'll know about financial statements. But if you did it, we need to be familiar with financial statements for this course. So we need to study about that. Okay, financial statements, if you open up um, Yahoo Finance, which gives the financial details for big companies. Here we can see Microsoft, right? Do you know Microsoft? $52 for stock in Microsoft. Okay, price has gone down a little bit uh, today. Here we can see financials. This is financials, the financial information. Income statement, we're going to study about, tells us about the profit and loss they made last year, okay? If we click on an income statement, we can see Microsoft's income statement. Do you think Microsoft made a profit last year? Made a loss? Income statement, we look at their revenues, we look at their costs, and we look at their profit. So we can see this is 2014. Did they make a profit? Net income, yes, 22 million, 22 billion, right? Then last year, did they make a profit? Yes, 12, 12 billion, not as much as the year before, okay? But they still made a profit, okay? So, uh, that's the income statement. It tells us about their revenues and their costs and operating income minus tax is net income, okay? The balance sheet for Microsoft tells us about their assets. Or how much assets do they have, okay? So here we can see Microsoft has a lot of assets, 176 million, right? And about their debt, what they owe, their liabilities, and then well, how much equity they have. Okay? So. We're going to look at those uh, statements, which give us that information about a company. So the balance sheet answers the question, how valuable are the assets of the firm? So we have assets with long lives, like land and buildings. Assets with shorter lives, like inventory and cash. A company like Microsoft, do you think they have much land and buildings? Or do they need as much land as buildings as other companies? No. Not as much as other companies, right? Microsoft is selling windows or that kind of thing, right? They don't need a factory. Do they need a factory to make windows? No. Well, they just make the CD, that's all, right? It's not that big job, right? Maybe Microsoft has assets which are not physical, like patents and trademarks. Okay, do you understand patent, intellectual property? Can you copy Microsoft Office? Can you make your own program exactly the same as Microsoft Office? 
and call it Pappas? No. no? So that is intellectual property, okay? That's going to be a large asset for Microsoft. Most of their assets are going to be intangible assets, intellectual property, okay? Then we have other assets, of course the trademark. If Microsoft sold the name trademark, that's very valuable. They get a lot of money for that, okay? Uh, then they also have cash and inventory. Do you understand inventory? Stock, right? They have so much CDs in the factory, that's inventory. So, it's telling us about the assets. How valuable are assets? Another thing it's telling us, where did we get the money to pay for these assets? Did we use owner's money, equities? Or borrowed money, debt? Okay? So, we can see assets and liabilities and equity down here. Assets on one side, we have these assets, then how do we pay for the assets on the other side? So, should it be equal? This should be equal to this. Okay, this is not telling us about profit or loss. It's just showing us this is what we own and this is how we pay for what we own. Okay? So, I mentioned Investopedia. Uh, so, Investopedia uh, not only gives some definition, but it also gives some short video. So we're going to just look at an example of a video okay, about the balance sheet from Investopedia. It helps to explain things in kind of a uh, simple way. It's broken up into three sections, assets, liabilities, and equity. A equals L plus E. Meet Joe. Joe goes to the bank and gets a small business loan. The bank gives him cash. On the balance sheet, his liabilities increase by the size of the loan, and his assets increase by the same amount. That should be equal, right? He gets a loan from the bank, goes into liabilities. Okay, this is equals to cash. He now has cash. That's an asset. Okay? The balance sheet remains in balance. Joe uses the cash to buy a truck and start his own pizza delivery service. His cash assets decrease, but that's balanced by an increase in his other assets, a new truck. As Joe delivers pizza, the profits are recorded in the balance sheet as retained earnings in the equity section of the balance sheet. The cash from his profit is recorded in the assets section, balancing out. Every month, Joe makes a payment against his loan. He reduces his liabilities by the amount of the payment, and his cash is reduced by the same amount. So we saw he bought a truck, right? Uh, cash goes down, truck asset goes up. Okay, he pays back his loan, cash goes down, loan gets smaller. Okay? To find out his business is worth, Joe subtracts liabilities from his assets. This equals the net worth of his business. Do you like Investopedia? You can write anything in here, limited liability or bankruptcy or default, they all, it has little videos like that, okay? As well as the exp explanation, so you can write down that name if you want to, check, right? And that's the media. Help us understand. It's like Wikipedia, but for finance, okay? Investopedia. So, assets. They are things that an organization owns. Current assets, cash and accounts receivable. We should remember accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is monies we didn't get paid yet, but we're owed for products and services that we sold on credit. So most of the business world works like this, okay? You want to buy some bicycles. I'm a bicycle manufacturer. You have a bicycle shop, okay? So you have to pay me for the bicycles. But you don't have any money because you just started your shop, okay? So you tell me, you send me the bicycles, then after I sell the bicycles, I'll pay you the money. Okay? That's called accounts receivable. I say, okay, so I sell him the bicycles. He doesn't pay me any money now. I trust him. He owes me the money. If he doesn't pay me the money, I can go to the court, okay? We have a contract. I will pay you in three months, okay? So I give him the bicycles now, 
he doesn't give me any cash. Okay? So that's recorded as accounts receivable in the balance sheet. Okay? Do you understand accounts receivable? Is that cash? No, I didn't get cash from him yet. Okay? Do I have the bicycles? No, I don't have the bicycles. Okay? So it's something else. It's called accounts receivable. I gave him the bicycles, he didn't give me the cash, I'm waiting for the cash. Accounts receivable. Okay? The opposite side, accounts payable. Okay? He will have accounts payable. He bought something, but he didn't pay for it yet. He got the bicycles, but he didn't pay any money yet. So that's accounts payable. So we'll see that. The reason that's a current asset is it's short term, you know, three months. Long term assets include buildings, equipment, machinery, other things which cannot be easily converted into cash. Okay? Can I convert a building into cash quickly? No. I can, but I'm not going to get much cash, right? Intangible assets are assets which we cannot see or touch. Examples include IP. Does everybody understand IP? Intellectual property? Yes? And brand name? Liabilities. Liabilities is a cash outflow. We cannot avoid the obligation. Current liabilities, short-term loans, accounts payable. Accounts payable is money we have not paid yet for products and services which we already purchased. Long-term liabilities, generally long-term loans. Equity. In the book, uh, value of equity, basically we subtract the liabilities from the assets. And what we're left with is book value of equity. Okay? So basically equity is equal to liabilities minus assets. Okay? This is the book value of equity. This is estimated using historical costs with accounting adjustments. So we bought a house. Okay, we don't use the market value of the house now. We use how much the house cost, cost when we bought it. Okay? Maybe adjust for inflation or something like that. So that's book value. So just to explain book value and market value. So book value is the original cost of the asset, adjusted upwards for improvements and downward for the loss in value. Okay? Market value is the cost we would get for the asset if we sold it today. So we have different values for things. Okay, let's say I have a house, an apartment. I bought the apartment for $200,000. Okay? Nowadays, the house next to my one, so it's the same house, sold for $300,000. Okay, that is the market value. Okay? But the accountant is not going to look at the market value. Okay? They're going to look at the book value. How much did you pay for the house? Maybe this, plus what? Plus inflation, say. Okay? Over the long term, the house price usually goes up with inflation. Okay? So the accountant will take the long term view. So the five years inflation was about 20%. So let's say I have for five years, it's 240,000. Okay? So this is the market value, this is the book value. Different, okay? If I sell the house now in the market, I might get this much, okay? I bought the house for this much and then there was inflation. Accountants like to use book value. Why? They have a preference for underestimating value. It's safer, okay? It's safer to underestimate, take the lower number rather than the higher number when we're accountant. Because we, when we're accountant, we want to Make sure that the company, we're saying, we can't say that the company is safe, and then the next week the company goes bankrupt, right? So we're conservative. Do you understand conservative? Bolso jockida? Bolso jockida? Is that correct? Can accountants be bolso jockida? Or a different word? Hmm? That's okay. Are you both so jockey that? <laughs> are you both so jockey that? No, you're not? Accountants are, right? 
They like to look at the conservative lower value. <coughs> so the income statement uh, asks the question, how profitable are the assets? Are we making a profit? Okay, we need to estimate the profits being made on our investments. So in order to show our profit, are we making money or not, we use the income statement. So here's an example of things we can see in the income statement. Revenues is sales, right? Other revenue, interest income. We invest in the US government bond. Okay, instead of keeping our money in cash, we can invest our money somewhere. Okay, which is better? Keep your money in cash or put it in the bank and get 2%. Okay, so we can get interest income from our money. That's another revenue, right? We can sell our assets. I sell my one of the company's assets, an apartment. I make a profit. That's also revenue. Okay? You understand revenue? We discussed in the first class. Okay? Then we have cost. Cost and expenses. Do you understand expenses? So here's some examples. Sa salaries. Okay? Pay the wages to the workers. The office supply. Repairs. Utilities. Power. Water. Telephone. Insurance, rent, tax, advertising, okay? They're all expenses. So revenue minus expenses <coughs> equals net income, the money we have left at the end, okay? So we saw on the Yahoo Finance, it's, this is the way it looks on Yahoo Finance, right? We have revenue from Microsoft, 93. Cost of revenue, 33. Other costs, operating expenses, research and development, general and administrative costs, okay? Total expenses. So operating income, or EBIT. Operating income is before interest and taxes. EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes, okay? Then here, we have our interest. Okay, take away our interest, and then take away our tax. So we can see we made this income before tax, and then tax is about 35%, right? So, Microsoft paid a lot of tax, okay? And then, they made this much income last year. Still a lot of income. So, Microsoft made a lot of revenue, 93 million, okay? The revenue cost, 33 million. They also did R&D and other expenses. Ended up with 18 million. Minus their tax, 12 million, okay? So, let's discuss the expenses a little bit. We have different types of expenses, mainly operating and capital expenses. Financing is interest, okay? Operating expenses are expenses that provide benefit for the current period, in theory. Do you understand the word operating? Operating means like running or that kind of thing. Doing, yes, in the current period. So for example, the cost of labor, the materials, if we're in a restaurant, what kind of materials would we use? Food, right? Electricity in the fridge, okay? So we use these materials to create the products sold. These are operating expenses. Financing expenses is the interest expense. Capital expenses is a very large expense, which generates benefit over a long term. For example, the cost of buying land and buildings can be a capital expense. So operating expenses should be, in theory, only those expenses which help us to make revenues in the current period. However, in practice, a number of expenses are called op operating expenses even though they're capital expenses. Okay? So we can see the example of depreciation, R&D, and operating leases. So let's look at the example. Do you understand depreciation? Have you heard depreciation before? How do you say depreciation in Korean? Does anybody know? If I have a car, I buy a car for $20,000 this year, how much will it be worth next year? If I sell this car next year, how much will it be worth? Minus 2,000. Hmm? Minus 2,000. So you think I can sell it for 18,000? 
quite optimistic. Right? So, what do we call the difference between this year and next year? The value of the car? Uh, because yeah, it's not as valuable. It starts to deprecate. That's called depreciation, right? It's the same for computers. Okay? This computer, when we buy it new, then every year it depreciates, the value goes down. How do you say depreciation in Korean? Samka <laughs> Sangha? Is that correct? So, we can have two types of depreciation. Straight line. Straight line depreciation. The <coughs> looks like this. Every year it goes down by 2,000. Okay? So if we were to draw a graph of straight line depreciation, it starts at 20 and it goes down in straight line. Okay, 18, 16, 14, okay, each year. Do you understand? Or we can have accelerated depreciation. The asset loses more value in the early years and less in the later years, which is a more realistic, more realistic effect, right? Probably the first year it's going to lose a lot of money, okay? Then the next year, not as much. And the next year, not as much. That's kind of a more realistic <coughs> picture of depreciation, okay? So we have two choices, straight line depreciation or accelerated depreciation for depreciating the value of our assets. Now, <coughs> the reason that we use depreciation is we get a tax benefit. So depreciation is included as an operating expense. So let's look at this example. So we are a pharma firm. Do you understand pharma? Pharmaceutical? Yes, yes, yes. So we have a five-year project. Usually the pharmaceutical company has a large upfront investment in R&D. First I do the R&D, right? I test on animals, then I test on humans, and then it's okay. Then I can start to sell. Okay? So I have to make this big expense on R&D before I get any revenues. That's normal for pharmaceutical. So we spent $8 million on R&D, research and development. How do you say research and development in Korean? Okay. I won't try to, I didn't hear properly, so we'll just say the other person heard, right? And two million on equipment before we even start to get any revenues. So year zero, before we start to get revenues, we spend 10 million on R&D and equipment, okay? Then in year one, we get revenues of 1 million. In year two, 4 million, okay? Our revenues start to grow, three, eight million. And year four, 10 million. And year five, 10 million, okay? So when we are making our accounts, we have some choices, right? We can put our R&D all here, minus 10 million in this year, okay? Or we can do minus 2 million every year when we have revenues. Those are the choices that we can do, okay? So we can show this as a loss of 10 million in the first year, right before we made our investment. This is going to give no tax benefit, as there was no revenues. Okay? Revenues minus cost, profit. So no profit, no tax benefit. For tax purposes, it is better to spread out the R&D and depreciation over the five year periods equally at two million a year, straight line. Okay? The depreciation expense will be subtracted from our revenues each year, allowing us to record a lower profit and pay less taxes. Okay? So let's say that we just do this one. We have to pay tax this year, 30% of 1 million, okay? 300,000 tax, okay? Here we have to pay 1.2 million tax, okay? Here we have to pay 2.4 million tax. Here we have to pay 3 million tax and 3 million tax, okay? Do you understand? Yes. If we make this much profit, let's say we have to pay that much tax. But if we take away this minus two, do we pay any tax this year? 
Oh, if we take away this two each year, then our net income will be minus one. Okay? Am I going to pay tax on a minus one net income? Yeah. I lost one million last year, no tax. Okay? So if I account here, if I say I spent 10 million in year zero, no tax benefit. Okay? But this is what depreciation allows us to do. It allows us to say we didn't spend any money here, okay? And we spent two million each year. Now that's not real situation. That's not real cash. Okay, I spent the cash here. Why do you think the government allows this kind of tax rule? Can anybody think? Why does the government allow this? Why doesn't the government tell the company, no, you spent the cash here, you have to do your accounting here. Why does the government allow companies to spread out the expense as an operating expense? Does anyone have any idea? Does, company, does the government want companies to do R&D or doesn't want companies to do R&D? It wants to encourage companies to do R&D, right? So that's why it makes this kind of rule. Okay? Because otherwise, maybe I'll say, oh, I'm not doing any R&D because I, I have to pay this much tax, so I don't make much profit. Okay? But if they can do this and take away their R&D expense over time, then they can get some tax advantage. Okay? So let's have a look at year two. Four minus two is going to be just two. So they just pay a small amount of tax here. 30% of two million is 600,000 instead of 1.2 million. Okay? So every year they're saving tax. Okay? So tax benefit is always it's the same as the debt. We just multiply this depreciation payment by the tax rate. So the benefit is going to be 2 million multiplied by the tax rate of 30% is going to be $600,000, right? So that's our tax benefit every year, okay? So over five years, that's going to give us a tax benefit, 3 million, okay? 30% of 10 million, okay? So we want to get this 3 million tax benefit. We don't get any here because we didn't make any revenue, okay? So we spread it out over the different years. So <clears throat> this is the same for depreciation, R&D and depreciation. The same if we do R&D or we buy a building at the start of the project, right? Or a car, company car. It's better for us to account for the car as depreciation rather than account for it here as a lump sum upfront cost, especially if we're a new company. If we're a new company, usually we make low revenues in the first years and high revenues in the later years. Okay? So we can get more tax benefit in the later years. So in accounting, we use accrual accounting. So accrual accounting means that we talked about uh, accounts receivable. So it means that we recognize the sale when the good is sold or the service is performed, not when the cash is received. So in the income statement, I sold you some bicycles. Okay? You're not going to pay me for another three months. Can I record that as revenues or not? Yes, according to the accounting rule, I can record that as revenues. Okay? When I sell the good or service, then that's when it's recorded in the revenue section. Okay? So we sell our product to another business today, but we don't get payment for three months. The revenue is recognized today on the income statement. We can already include it. So EBIT, we mentioned the operating income is EBIT, just to show the definition here. Earnings before interest and taxes. Okay? Earnings is profit before interest and taxes. EBIT is also referred to as operating income. Okay? So let's uh, review with some questions. So discuss with your partner. What does the balance sheet show? What does the income statement show? 
What is it telling us? Is it telling us about the profit of the company? Is show cash flow. No, cash flow statement is showing the cash flow. What are assets? What are assets? We studied in the first week. What are assets? On the things we own that have value, right? So what is the balance sheet showing us? The company's own things. So what the company owns, right? How much? So the value, right? Yes. Value is the, is the important word for balance sheet. Value of what we own. And on the other side, what's this? Liabilities and equity. So what can you say? What is that? If assets is the value of what we own, what's this? This is where we got the money, right? Where we got the money to pay for what we own. So we bought a truck. Where did we get the money? We got a loan from the bank. Okay? So it shows us what we own and where we got the money, the balance sheet. Okay, so discuss with your partner about the income statements. What does the income statement show? Where is the attendance list? Who has the attendance list? Thank you. Master. What do we learn from looking at the income statement? <coughs> uh, e Where is e yes. What do we learn from looking at the income statement?
이석이 Okay, so we see the revenues cost and income. What is another word for income? Net income. What's another word for income? Salary. Begins with P, ends with T. Has R O F I in the middle? Mm -hmm. Profit. So it shows us the profit of the company, right? Income statement. These are the revenues, these are the costs. Did we make a profit or not? Okay? So then let's finish there for today. So you can review the class on the video. Class, okay? Thank you.